I want to welcome everyone here, uh, especially all of our distinguished visitors and guests, and uh, you'll get to know some of them as we go through the program. A little bit about how, uh, how we got to where we are today. Uh, I've been here as the Pentagon uh, chaplain for about two years, and during that time I've had uh, uh, two emails of people in the Pentagon community asking if uh, we could provide something for the sick community. And uh, didn't really know how to go with that, where to go for that, and I ran into uh, uh, Major Kelsey and uh, one day just uh, in the hallway. And then we got to talking and I said, well, we, we have some interest in this. And I said, uh, could we do something to educate our community about the religious uh, needs and uh, religious faith life of, of those in the Sikh religion? And so uh, he said, certainly, and uh, things happen fast, and here we are today. And it is our honor and great joy to host this event today. And we look for uh, a longer relationship. And uh, as has happened here in the Pentagon so often, when we find a need, uh, usually that need continues to grow. So I'll turn it over to Major Kelsey. And Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everyone, it is such an honor to be here today, uh, celebrating with everyone the sick day of Visaki. Uh, in a very formal way, uh, the sick greeting is Waheguruji ka Khalsa, Waheguruji ki Fateh, means uh, uh, the pure belong to God, all victory belongs to God, and it is the formal sick greeting. So, without further ado, uh, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful lineup today. Uh, we will be beginning uh, with uh, uh, Corporal Lamba, uh, Sim Simran Lamba. He is the first enlisted Sikh uh, in the U.S. military to be granted an accommodation for his turban and beard. He will give us an overview of uh, Kirtan or the musical selection and give us an explanation of that. Uh, and then we are very, very honored to have the uh, musical uh, prayer of uh, uh, Jagmohan Singh Ji, Harmon Singh Ji, and Harvinder Singh Ji. Uh, after that, uh, we are graced by Ms. Inikor, uh, noted uh, author, uh, well-respected historian, interfaith leader, avid painter, uh, who engages in, in, uh, in children's education. Uh, one of my heroes, um, and then uh, absolutely floored to have one of my friends, um, and, and another one of my heroes, Ms. Valerie Gore here, an award-winning uh, filmmaker, civil rights advocate, interfaith le leader, well-published essayist, featured on CNN, MSNBC. Uh, she's a founder of Gro Groundswell. She's led a number of national-level campaigns uh, regarding uh, hate crimes, racial profiling, immigration. Uh, we have such a fantastic program for you all today. Um, and so without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, first just uh, recognize a couple of folks that have come from a, a very far, far away, uh, and somebody, some folks that are come from not so far away. <laughs> um, uh, uh, certainly uh, our, our soldiers. So. Uh, uh, Colonel Tina Korsodi, uh, uh, Captain Thejdeep Singh Ratan, Captain Manyot Singh, uh, recently discharged from Her Majesty's Army, <laughs> uh, AO2, or uh, uh, first, off, uh, first Officer Guldeep Kaur, uh, Corporal Simbrampeet Lamba, and, and my father, Corporal Churn Singh Kalsi, honorably discharged from Indian Air Force. So. And I would uh, be remiss if I uh, 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 did not honor and thank uh, Mr. Stubblefield, Mr. Mr. Dr. Taylor, uh, Mr. James Forrester. Thank you so much for, for coming here and, and, and uh, honoring us with your presence. So, uh, so with that, uh, uh, Corporal Lamba, uh, could you please give the introduction to Kirtan?
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, from the time of our founding in early 1500s, we have drawn inspiration and guidance from our scriptural tradition. Our entire scripture, the Guru Granth Sahib, is written to music. It's in verse, it's poetry, and just listening to and imbibing that music is a long, soul-enriching practice in our tradition. The Guru Granth Sahib is a collection of poetry, of songs, that speak about the import importance of cultivating our spiritual and serving humanity. Our tradition has a long history of balancing these two aspects, and we talk about it in many ways, such as our concepts of Saint Soldier, Sant Sipahi, or our emphasis on the conjunction of the service and meditation, Seva Simran. Our scripture is also unique in that it was largely written and compiled by our own Guru Prophets. They believed in pluralism that people of different religious backgrounds could reach enlightenment. <coughs> and interestingly, they included the musical writings of spiritual figures from other religious traditions. This outlook coheres with the Sikh belief that everyone in the world is absolutely equal, regardless of social backgrounds, gender, caste, religion, or anything of the, of the sort. Sikhs believe that the Creator resides throughout the creation, and therefore serving the creation is a way of glorifying the divine. In other words, service is prayer. Is prayer. In addition to being equally present in every single thing, we also believe that God is equally present in every single person. We are all embodiments of the divine, and we all have the same divine light flickering inside of us. The composition we will be singing today reflects this outlook. According to Sikh traditions, these words were first sung by the 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh. This composition emphasizes the oneness and familyhood of humanity. Manas ki jat sabhe eko pachano, recognize the origin and status of all humanity to be one. It's worth noting here that there is no ambiguity in what he's saying here. It is a command to the listener, to the singer, to all of us, that we ought to stop creating social divisions and negativity and instead, we ought to serve in a way that, rec that recognizes our shared humanity and facilitates our collective progress as a society. Thank you.
I start with the Sikh salutation. Today, we have gathered here for Vesakhi, which is really a spring harvest festival for which is celebrated in Punjab and in many South Asian communities. However, Vesakhi has a very special significance for the Sikh community. It was the Vesakhi of 1699 when the 10th Sikh Guru Prophet Guru Gobind Singh invited his disciples to come to the city of Anandpur Sahib in Punjab. At this gathering, the Guru formally established the Khalsa Panth. What is the Khalsa Panth? It's a community of committed Sikhs. He standardized a core of discipline, practice, and identity. 1699, the day of Vesakhi, was the turning point. This is what the Sikhs continue to celebrate. This is the tradition of the Sikhs. He then bowed before its representatives in a, as a way of indicating the transmission of corporal authority and publicly entrusted the leadership to the Khalsa Panth the Pant, the community of committed Sikhs. So every year on Vesakhi, Sikhs come together and commemorate and reflect, reflect on the significant historical development. While the community holds a very special place in its heart for this occasion, Vesakhi per se is not a holiday. Because in the Sikh tradition, we do not consider any time or any place to be holy. Rather, it is an occasion for celebrating the community's growth and recalling a set of shared values and collective memories. So Sikhism, as the world knows it, 
or Siki, as we like to call it. So I'm going to share that with you. Siki is fairly young as far as world religions goes. Its origin coincides with the time when Columbus was searching for India and guess what? He discovered America. <laughs> so around the same time in the foothills of the Himalayas in Punjab, Guru Nanak, the first of the Sikh Guru prophets, began sharing his thoughts with, his, with the people. He traveled far and wide. His fragrance spread. So who was this man? His words, not mine. My name is Nanak. I am composed of five elements. I am no messiah. I am no saint. Some call me a goblin. Some call me a sprite. Some call me a lost man. I have forsaken reason, searching for the true one. Nine guru prophets followed, and over a period of 240 years, they gave sh shape to six thought, identity, and way of life. So then the question asks, what is Sikh thought? What is Sikh thought? Ik Onkar. There is one divine being. Now the primary number one is being used. This is recognizable to people of all languages and culture. The mathematical one, one, is formless. It is beyond cause and effect. It is all space and yet transcends infinitely beyond as well. There are no borders. There are no male or female images, no concept and designation of this pure oneness. Furthermore, this oneness cannot be imaged or shaped in any exclusive form. And paradoxically, this one is within each and every one of us. It permeates all time and space. Hence, we seek no conversions. For who are we converting? For the one is an all, there is no other. Therefore, the concept of the other does not exist in Sikh thought. For the one exists in all, there are no strangers. Equality for us is paramount. The one who regards all as equal is truly religious says the Guru. So what is the Sikh way of life? The Sikh way of life is to create communities where all are respected and treated equal. You know the word equal, equal, equal keeps coming up. I'm just sounding myself. We recognize these differences. Of course we know we are different. And this is what the Guru has to say about that. Different vestures from different countries may make us different. Nevertheless, we have the same eyes, the same ears, the same body and the same voice. Our challenge, therefore, is how do we raise our consciousness and come to the realization that we are all equally human and have the same biological and spiritual ingredients. At this point, I'd like to share a reading from the scripture that affirms a woman's creative and natural development in the social fabric of society. Of a woman, we are conceived. Of a woman, we are born. To a woman, we are engaged and married. It is woman who is friend and partner for life. It is woman who keeps humanity going. From woman, a woman is born. Without woman, there can be no human birth. Without woman, says Nanak, only the true one exists. Therefore, a woman can conduct every Sikh ceremony. There is nothing she is excluded from. We have no designated clergy. Sorry. <laughs> Any Sikh who can read the scripture and perform a service or ceremony can do it, be it from birth to death. Our view of life is one does not need a mediator between oneself and the divine. The divine is accessible to all and not just a privileged few. So the Sikh view of human life is that wor this world is the creation of the divine, reflecting the divine being and the divine purpose. A very positive value 
is placed on the social order, natural order, and all worldly structures, the family, social, political, yes, political, economic systems are within the orbit of religious concern. <coughs> Human life is an opportunity to develop personally by practicing piety and devoting oneself to the service of humanity, thereby improving the society as a whole. The body, says the Guru, is the palace, the temple, the house of the divine, and into it rests the divine eternal life. Now in Sikh thought, a true person of faith does not retreat to the world from the world onto a mountaintop, but battles in the open field with a mind perfectly in control and a heart poised in love all the time. The love which is referred to, referred to here is the capital L, divine love. This, in a nutshell, is the sixth way of life. The deeper our awareness and the deeper our connection with the divine, the more vibrant is our participation in the everyday affairs of life. One of the most conspicuous teachings of the faith is its spirit of affirmation, which you heard before, Charvikala. We live in the here and now. Sikh thought is not overly concerned as to what happens after we die. For us, heaven and hell are a state of mind. When you are connected to the divine, you are in heaven. And when you are removed from that presence, you are in hell, which is a state of confusion. So what is mukti, nirvana, salvation in Sikh thought? For us, salvation can be attained in this very world. Amidst its laughter and sport, amidst its fineries and food, salvation is possible. One need not be on a mountain top. So the question then arises, how does one conduct themselves in this beautiful world? There's a symbolism which is frequently used in the scripture that answers this. Be like the lotus in the pond, which is untouched by its impurity. It just rises and stays unaffected. Be a saint soldier, a saint soldier. Strive for that, the Sant Sipai, one who is prepared to defend and protect the rights of all. But remember, before you pick up that sword, make sure it's a battle of justice and not revenge. So this is the sixth way of life. So in the sixth spirit, I wish everyone here a joyful, enriching Visakhi. And may the celebration of Visakhi in the, at the Pentagon continue from here on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was exceptionally beautiful. Um, thank you, Ms. Anikwaji. So now in the Sikh tradition of uh, <coughs> prayer, we are going to do Erdas. So I'll ask everyone to please rise. Ikkim Kar Sat Nam Sri Vai Guruji Ki Fateh Sri Bhagwati Ji Sahai Var Sri Bhagwati Ji Ki Paat Shahi Dasvi Pritam Bhagwati Simar Ke Kur Nanak Lehi Te Aai Phir Angad Gurte Amar Das Ram Dasse Hoi Sahai Ajan Har Go Bind No Simro Sri Har Rai Sri Har Krishan Te Aaiye Jis Jitthe Sab Dukh Jai Tek Bahadur Simriye Kar No Nidhya Vetai Sab Thai Hoi Sahai the Swapasha Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Sab Thai Hoi Sahai. The Swapasha Ji Jyot Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, the Part Darshan Dizat Khalsa Ji Sahib Bolna Ji, Wahe Guru. Panja Pyaarya Chau Sahib Shadiya Chaliya Muktiya Hatiya Japiya Tapiya Naam Japiya Van Chakiya Tek Chalai Tek Vai Tek Ke Andrit Kita Tena Pyaarya Sachi Arya Di Kamai Da Tiyan Dar Ke Khalsa Ji Sahib Bolna Ji, Wahe Guru. Jinna Singha Singhaniya Ne Taram Hed Seas Tite बंद बंद कटाए खोपड़ियां लुवाई चढ़किया ते चढ़े तन आर्या नाल चढ़ाए गए गुरुद्वारे दी सेवा ली कुर्बानियां कीतिया तरम नी हारिया सिखी कैसा स्वासा नाल ने भाई तेना दी कमाई दा ध्यान तरके खालसा जी साहिब बोलना जी वाहे गुरु पंजा तख्ता ते सर्वत गुरुद्वारे दे ध्यान तरके खालसा जी साहिब बोलना जी वाहे गुरु पित में सर्व खालसा जी की अरदास है जी सर्वत खालसा जी को वाहे गुरु वाहे गुरु 
ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਮ ਸਵਸਤ ਚਿਤਿਆਵੇ ਚਿਤਿਆਵਨ ਕਾ ਸਦਕਾ ਸਰਬ ਸੁਖ ਹੋਵੇ ਜਹਾਂ ਜਹਾਂ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਸਾਇਬ ਤਹਾ ਤਾ ਚਿਆ ਰਿਆਇਤ ਤੇਗ ਤੇਗ ਫਤਿ ਬਿਰਤ ਕੀ ਪੈਠ ਪੰਥ ਕੀ ਜੀਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਸਹਾਇ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਕੇ ਬੋਲ ਬਾਲੇ ਬੋਲਨਾ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਦਾਨ ਕੇ ਸਤਾਨ ਰਹਿਤ ਦਾਨ ਵਿਵੇਕ ਦਾਨ ਵਿਸਾਹ ਦਾਨ ਪਰੋਸਾ ਦਾਨ ਦਾਨਾ ਸਿਰ ਦਾਨ ਨਾਮ ਦਾਨ ਸਰਵੀ ਅਮਰਸਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਇਸ਼ਨਾਨ ਚੌਂਕੀਆਂ ਚੰਡੇ ਬੁੰਗੇ ਜੁਗੋ ਜੁਗ ਅਟਲ ਧਰਮ ਕਾ ਜੈਕਾਰ ਬੋਲਨਾ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦਾ ਮਨ ਨੀਵਾ ਮਤ ਉੱਚੀ ਮਤਾ ਰਾਖਾ ਆਪ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਹੈ ਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਆਪਣੇ ਪੰਥ ਦੇ ਸਦਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਤਾਰ ਜੀਓ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਨਨਕਾਨਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਿਆ ਗੁਰਦਾਮਾ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਪੰਥ ਨੂੰ ਵਿਛੋੜਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਖੁੱਲੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਦਾਰ ਤੇ ਸੇਵਾ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਦਾ ਦਾਨ ਖਾਸੀ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਬਖਸ਼ੋ ਹੇਨ ਮਾਨਿਆ ਦੇ ਮਾਨ ਤਾਨਿਆ ਦੇ ਤਾਨ ਨਿਓਟਿਆ ਦੀ ਓਟ ਸੱਚੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਵਾਚ ਓਵਰ 올 ਰਿਲੀਜਨਸ ਵੀ ਪਲੇ ਪ੍ਰੇ ਫਾਰ 올 ਆਫ ਆਰ ਸੋਲਜਰਸ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੇ ਫਾਰ ਥੋਸ ਦੈਟ ਆਰ ਸੈਪਰੇਟਿਡ ਫਰ ਥੇਮ ਫਰਮ ਥੇਰ ਫੈਮਿਲੀਸ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਵਿਸ਼ ਥੇਮ ਅ ਸਪੀਡੀ ਐਂਡ ਸੇਫ ਰਿਟਰਨ ਹੋਮ ਅਖਰਵਾੜਾ ਕਾਟਾ ਬੁਲਚਕ ਮਾਫ ਕਰਨੇ ਜੀ ਸਰਬਤੀ ਕਾਰਜ ਰਾਸ ਕਰਨੇ ਜੀ ਸਹੀ ਪਿਆਰੇ ਮੇਲ ਜਿਨਾ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਤੇਰੇ ਨਾਮ ਚਿਤ ਆਵੇ ਨਾਨਕ ਨਾਮ ਚੜ੍ਹਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਤੇਰੇ ਪਾਣੇ ਸਰਬਤ ਭਲਾ ਬੋਲੇ ਸੋਨਹਾਲ ਸਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਐਂਡ ਨਾਓ ਫਾਰ ਦੀ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਮਿਸ ਵੈਲਰੀ ਕੋ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਕਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਟੂ ਦ ਪੈਨਗਨ ਚੈਪਲਨ ਐਂਡ ਟੂ ਦ ਚੈਪਲਨ ਕੋਰ ਫੋਰ ਗੈਦਰਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਟੂ ਆਨ ਦਿਸ ਹਿਸਟੋਰਿਕ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਬਸਾਕੀ ਦ ਫਾਊਂਡਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦ ਸਿਕ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਆਲਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਲੈਰੀ ਸਟਬਲਫੀਲਡ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਜੇਮਸ ਟੇਲਰ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਜੇਸਨ ਫੋਰਸਟਰ ਫੋਰ ਹੈਲਪਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਮੇਕ ਥਿਸ ਡੇ ਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਐਵਰ ਸਿਕ ਇਵੈਂਟ at the Pentagon in the history of the United States. So today is a tremendous milestone in the history of the Sikh community, a community that has made America home for more than a century, and in the history of our nation, a nation ever committed to the dream of equality where our institutions reflect the resplendent diversity of the American people. Today we have heard the sacred music, poetry and stories of the Sikh faith and we have just heard my brother and American hero Major Khalsi recite our ardas the foundational Sikh prayer recited in all of our worship now as a community we recite this ardas at every event every wedding every holiday upon the birth of a child upon the death of a loved one every sunday morning at gurdwaras houses of worship across this nation and around the globe Ardas is a prayer, a petition to God, but it is also a story of who we are as a people. The prayer begins with the words ik on God, one reality is God is one, all paths lead to one. This vision of oneness was the divine revelation of a humble herdsman named Nanak born in the year 1469 in Punjab. It was a time of tremendous turmoil. Hindus and Muslims in conflict, women oppressed and the poor outcast. And then the story goes Nanak disappeared by the river for 3 days. People thought that he had drowned. They thought he was a dead man, but he emerged on the third day with a vision of unity. Ik Omkar that Inni Kaur so beautifully described. Guru Nanak passed his light to nine successive teachers who led the Sikh community through the centuries and in Ardas we invoke each and every one of our gurus by name the 10th teacher Guru Gobind Singh ji declared that our final and everlasting teacher would be the Guru Granth Sahib a compilation compilation of our sacred poetry and so in Ardas we remember the wisdom contained in its pages and we cry together in one voice throughout the prayer you all heard it vahe guru vahe guru vahe in exaltation of wonder guru the enlightener and so we express our wonderment of god who enlightens us and shows us the truth of oneness now truth is higher than everything guru nanak taught but higher than truth higher than even truth is truthful living is the living out of truth 
And so as any course said, we cannot stay at the mountaintop. A Sikh is uh, transcended in ecstatic wonderment and worship, but is returned to the earth almost on the palm of God's hand in order to walk this land, to serve humanity and seva, spiritually grounded service. So when we see injustice, we are never to hide. We are to stand for equality, to fight for dignity, to serve others as we would serve ourselves, even when it becomes dangerous, even in the face of death. If you desire to play the, ga the game of love with me, Guru Nanak calls to us, then step forward with your head on your palm. In Ardas, we hear the echoes of a people who have lived and died walking that path of revolutionary love, starting with early battles for survival against invading Mughal armies. We invoke the Panj Piyare, the five beloved ones who are willing to give their lives for God and Guru when the 10th teacher called for sacrifice on Vasakhi Day in 1699. We invoke the Chad Sahibzade, his four martyred sons, the elder two fighting on a blood-soaked battlefield, the younger two bricked alive for refusing to renounce their faith. And we invoke the Chali Muktiya, 40 soldiers who abandoned their post during the siege of Anandpur, but were led back by the woman warrior Mai Bago. Donning a turban and mounting a horse, a sword in her hand, she has become the sick model of a saint soldier, one who loves God and is ever devoted to fighting for justice on earth, who becomes the one she is waiting for. In fact, we invoke, in the words of Ardas, all of those lions and lionesses who have given their heads for their religion, who were cut limb by limb, scalped, crushed on the wheel, and sawn in pieces, who sacrificed in service of our good waters, our houses of worship, who did not relinquish their faith and served with every hair, and every breath. And as we recite are thus, we remember the sacrifices of generations even in the last century. We remember the soldiers who marched to fight Hitler's armies, soldiers like my grandfather who bravely served wearing his turban like his father and his father before him going back seven generations. He used to tell me he would save a portion of his single water canteen in the deserts of Egypt and Libya just so he could wash his long hair. We remember those who fought for India's independence and died in the massacres of the 1947 partition which carved Pakistan out of India and separated six from holy sites we still pray to return to. And we remember 30 years ago this year, the men, women, and children murdered in 1984, when the blood of 3,000 Sikhs flowed in the streets of India's capital in pogroms that we are still seeking justice for. And these moments of terror, and these moments of crisis, Sikhs were identified by their turbans, but would rather face death than give up who they were. We are a people that has lived and suffered and struggled and still lift our heads high. Our thus reminds us. And so we pray for our religion to last through the ages. We pray for the gifts of discipline and discernment, truth and faith, and above all, the gift of God's presence in our hearts. And finally, we pray for all of humanity. At the very end of the prayer, you heard it, Nanak nam chardi kala tere baame sarvata pala. The prayer of our thus is a story of our people. In the name of God, the translation goes, we find everlasting optimism. Within your will, may there be grace for all of humanity. So it's a story of a people committed to serve all of humanity. Our thus is our living guide and moral compass echoing around the globe and on American soil, like a river flowing through the centuries so that it pours into the spirit of our people, into our, into our very being and our very breaths that we are ever nourished and ever sustained. And as a living document, it leaves open space at the end for us to offer our own particular prayers as a congregation and silently in our own hearts. Today we heard our thus in a moment of celebration. Today is a day of tremendous celebration.
but we have also heard our thus, this prayer, in our darkest hour. A year and a half ago, many of us in this room stood in the Gurdwara in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, just days before that house of worship had been a site of a mass shooting. The largest act of violence on a faith community since the church bombing in 1963 in Birmingham that took four little girls. In the days after that shooting, I watched the community tear out the blood-soaked carpets, pick up the shattered glass, and paint over the bullet holes in the walls, all to the sounds of prayer. And the very next Sunday, they gathered in worship and recited are thus. I heard the names of each of the six who had died that day. We prayed for each of them. I heard the name of Lieutenant Brian Murphy, the police officer who took 17 bullets to protect our community, and we prayed for him and his recovery. And then I heard a name that shook me to my core. It was the name of the gunman. And we as a community prayed for the soul of the gunman who took so many lives that day. Ardas gives us moral courage to endure in hardship, whether in the face of hate on our city streets or blood in a prayer hall. But Ardas also reminds us that we are meant to face these struggles as saint soldiers. There's one last story I want to share. Once, the story goes, our 10th teacher, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, was asked by a Mughal empire to show him, emperor, to show him a miracle. Now the Guru presented his sword, which we six call a kirpan, one of our articles of faith. The sword is my miracle, he said. But there is a difference between my sword and yours. Behind your sword lurks anger, Behind my kirpan, only compassion. Yours only doles out death. Mine rejuvenates life. Yours deprives people of their dignity, while mine saves their honor. The sword is a central symbol of the Sikh faith. The sword is made holy only when the soul has cultivated moral courage to wield it. Today, I am proud to say that I see a new generation of six learning to wield many different kinds of swords. The pen, the film camera, the microphone, the doctor's scalpel, the lawsuit. In fact, many in this room, people like Gurjot Gore and Saprit Gore and Rajdeep Singh and Amardeep Singh and Major Khalsi and Lieutenant Colonel Chaudhary, many of you here are using your swords to fight for an America where all people may live, work, worship, and serve their country as equals. So today, as we commemorate Vasaki at the Pentagon, let us also celebrate that we are still writing our story. Let our uniform of faith, let this long hair, let these proud turbans, let this silver kara come to be seen to stand for the values at the very heart of the America's spirit, equality, freedom, and selfless service. And let us go forth in the spirit of Jardikala, that sense of boundless optimism, that our children and our children's children will walk even these halls with the wisdom and strength of our faith, helping make this world a more just and loving place for Sarvatapala, for all of humanity. Thank you. Bye, Guruji Kalkasa. Bye, Guruji Kalkasa.